This is what I've learned from staying away from my smart home for an extended period of time. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Gio from Smart Home Makers and in this channel, we are transforming ordinary homes into smart homes. So the ultimate test of reliability of your smart home is to actually leave it there and you can't even touch anything for weeks. So how did it go? Let me tell you all about it. But first, let's roll the intro. So before actually leaving the home, I actually took care of turning off the devices that I did not require. For example, my HDMI matrix that didn't require, televisions that didn't require. So I was just trying to turn off and save as much energy as I could. But I was keeping up the key services running. The Unify system and networking system was all up and running. And the Unify protect camera system was obviously turned on and it was triggering motion anytime there was any issue. I'm running Home Assistant as my smart home platform of choice and that has external access thanks to Nabucasa, so always good. Problem happened was after a few weeks, my Home Assistant instant just got stuck. And actually, if you wanna try and see me fixing it, you'll find a video at the end of this video. So I couldn't even access the dashboard remotely uh, and it was entirely painful. And the reason why this was painful is because there was a motion sensor that was keep triggering lights for some reason. And this motion sensor wasn't properly positioned. So it was positioned uh, towards a window. And this window, whenever it sort of the light changed uh, significantly, it would trigger motion and lights would go on in the house, which obviously wasn't ideal in terms of like energy consumption and saving money. So luckily I had these lights integrated into Amazon's ecosystem and I was able to turn them off manually from there. But because I couldn't access Home Assistant or Node Red from where I was, I couldn't actually turn this automation off. So I had this pain once in a while uh, before nighttime, I was trying to turn these off manually. Um, I would have loved to have these lights integrated in the home kit. I really never sorted home kit out properly. So uh, I will be doing it next time I actually leave the home because home kit would have been a bit more convenient to control things. Luckily I had other things connected in the home kit and I'll tell you why, um, because it could have been a bit of a disaster. My biggest fear was the smart lock, how the battery will hold up from being away for a significant amount of time. So coming when I came back home, the smart lock was indeed dead. It was completely dead. The battery just went out flat. So if you're thinking about installing a smart lock in a holiday home or some other property that you don't visit quite often, think about battery life, think about having a secondary way of entrance or at least someone that can go frequently and charge your smart lock up. Luckily, I have a garage door controlled through uh, the app and I was able, thanks to HomeKit, which was still connecting to Home Assistant, to fire it up. Um, all of that is fired by Shelly, Shelly One. There's a video that I've made about that on the channel. Um, so the good thing is that the Shelly One, alternatively, I could have connected to the Shelly One knowing its IP address once I was in range of Wi-Fi. So by being outside of my home, I was able to control that. I could have enabled cloud access as a one-off to even control that outside of my home or not. So it's good to like, stress test your connectivity. So when you're uh, setting this up for external access, you might want to set it up in a way that you can enable cloud access, even if we are very adamant with local first as an approach. The Unify system notification worked fine in the sense that nothing really happened. So we didn't have any intrusions, so we didn't really actually uh, test it out in that sense. I was getting maybe one to two notifications a day about movement and most of them were like spiders uh, crawling around or light conditions significantly changing in rooms which would trigger these notifications um, and then it got to a point where after a week or two that these notifications you sort of turn a blind eye to uh, which could prove a bit dangerous because that could have been the actual moment when something significant happened in a house so there's some sort of sensitivity I need to change, but I was quite happy to have the peace of mind to actually have those cameras to actually check that things were going fine regardless. Accessing data was another thing that I wasn't quite able to do to the full extent. So I really couldn't access um, my Plex media server. It's designed for it to be locked down, but I um, probably would have preferred maybe some access to it while I was away 
for an extended period of time. So I might consider having some sort of process that I, I can enable external access as I wish. But luckily, uh, most of my documents are stored in my iCloud uh, system and that syncs with my MacBook and my phone and everything else. Uh, I was able to access some key documents while I was away that I digitalized previously. So I really recommend any key documents that you have, for any letters, important documents, uh, try to digitalize them. Uh, and if you can destroy them, that's even better. So you're sort of removing some physical trace and you're securing it uh, into a secured area. But obviously that really depends on uh, how secure your iCloud environment is. So, uh, you know, be aware of that. These are things that I've learned from staying away from my smart home. Please let me know in the comment section down below if uh, you've experienced some issues with reliability yourself or going away from your smart home and taking a different perspective. Like and subscribe. Uh, I will be hugely appreciated if you do that. FYI, I've got some disk space issues. So we're going to be clearing out that in the next video. Hope you've been fine. And hope you've enjoyed a great summer.